here is our fourth and final Paper Pumpkin Change is Beautiful from April 2022's kit. We are going to make this card. And it's not my most favorite, but I got pieces and parts that I've changed up a little bit to make it more appealing and I'm liking it better. But I just wanted to show you guys it's a center step card stands up looks kind of like this from the side and so I'm going to get started and I'll show you what I did we are going to come in with our trimmer and we're going to use a four and a quarter by 11 piece of cardstock and you're going to trim or not trim sorry you're going to score so you're going to score at one inch but you're only going to score up to the one inch mark on your side ruler so put your paper at one inch and then pull your score blade up to one inch. That's all you're going to do. Then you're going to lift up your score blade and you're going to come back to where it's at four and a quarter and you're going to score in one inch to three and a quarter. So you've got one inch up and one inch in on each of those. Then you're going to move the paper I'm going to turn it around just so I've got better control over the paper. We're going to slide the paper up to two inches and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in from the four and a quarter with our score to three and a quarter and then we're going to come from the other side up to one. Then we're going to slide the paper down to five and a half. And this time you're going to put the score at one. And score to three and a quarter. Then you're going to put your paper at six and a half. And you're going to score again from the four and a quarter mark to three and a quarter. Back. I'm just doing it a couple times because I got thick cardstock. And then I'm putting it at one and going back to the edge. So basically, down here twice and up here once you're just scoring in one inch. So now we're going to take our paper and we're going to put this short edge along the top. We're going to put the long edge at one inch and now we're going to cut. I'm thinking, let's see. Okay, good. We're pretty much all in the in the uh, film. No, we're not because I I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm hoping I'm in. But what you're going to do where our two score marks are, you're going to put your cutter one inch in. So you've got the paper at one inch. We're going to put the cutter down. We're going to go one inch up from the bottom. So we should be at 10. And we're going to score all the way up to our mark, which is at four and a half, which is totally, you know, new numbers for this, but from the first score line all the way up to the last one. So we're going to put our cutter in here. We can see the mark. The mark is at 10 inches and cut all the way up to the next mark, which is at four and a half. Now you want to do the other side. So what I'm going to do, because we're kind of looking at our marks, is we're going to flip our paper around and put the edge up at the one inch. 
and then we're going to look for our score lines. So there was our, like our first one. See, here's where we started with the cutting. Oh, you probably can't see. It might be off the screen. So we're going to go put the cutter at one inch because that should be where our first line started. One inch. And I can see up here at six and a half is my other line. So we're going to cut up to six and a half. And we are all done cutting. So now here's the bottom of our card and this is this is what we look like. So we've got our two cuts over here that go down to this piece that folds up at, at the bottom. So what we're going to do is these two pieces go back, this one goes back, these two go in, and then these two go forward. See how that worked? These two are going to go back, and this tall one here is going to go back. These two down here toward the base are going to go like valley folds. These kind of went mountain fold. These two are going to be kind of valley fold. And then if you pull the back down and around, it's all going to kind of collapse down to how you want it. And then these two, this piece stays straight, so these two score lines will pull themselves down and into place. And then it will stand up like that. So go ahead and just burnish on your score lines and get it all into place. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the other right hand portion of this card. And now originally I had cut it so that the birds were on this side, but I didn't really like how much green was over here um, from where these birds were. So I cut the birds out and switched them up to butterflies. So let me... Um, well, and because I was doing all that, guys, I had to pre-cut everything. So what you're going to want to do is, with this piece, you're going to want to, I'd say, start over here. And you want to cut one piece at 7 eighths inch. You need your center piece at 2 inches. And then you need one more piece at 7 eighths inch. So it'll come about this much of the card. So I got... I cut one piece at seven eighths, I cut one piece at two, and then my final piece is at seven eighths. So you'll have this much of the card left over. And then for my sample here, that's where I cut one more at seven eighths right here. And so that's why my sample has more of the green up at the top. So then you're just going to want to um, adhere the two side panels down. And you can flatten it out, flatten the card back out if you want to, to make sure you're spacing everything in there where you want it. I'm doing 7 8 inches on these 1 inch pieces over here just because I didn't want a whole lot of the white showing. I was going to make a blue base, um, but I just decided to go with white for the, um, to let the other colors kind of do their, I want the other colors to shine. So um, I went with just a basic white base, but you could do um, balmy blue. And now I'm going to put on the other side base. 
and I'm putting them up a little higher to the top because these the extra space I got down here at the bottom is going to be um, I don't want to say hidden but it's it's not really going to be seen because it's going to be down inside of the fold so now I have the center piece that is about one and three quarters inches by four and a quarter and I'm going to layer that on a two inch by four and a quarter piece that we're going to stick on the middle and again if you don't want the pop of color with the melon mambo feel free to not use it and I only put the color on the two sides I didn't go um, and put it at the up at the top so then I'm going to glue this down to the center panel of this fold. Then I have a piece of the polka dotted card or polka dotted envelope. I cut open the envelope and we need a this is one inch remember we made our first score line at one inch so this here's one inch so I cut open my envelope and then I made a slice off at about seven eighths inches and then I cut it at four inches I do believe let me I'm gonna cut it a little bit over four just because I think I ended up cutting it twice let me let me just verify it should be four and a quarter inches wide the card and so I I went four and an eighth no I, I did this part twice too I went four and an eighth just to leave less of the white border around it so we got a 7 8 inch by 4 and an eighth inch piece of the polka dotted envelope get a good feel for what I got going here and I'm gonna be more worried about the bottom border all right so we've got that pull the sample back up in there and that was from the envelope then I have just uh, random melon mambo scraps and I'm using a retired story label punch but you can use any punch that works for you and then I've got the a large oval and some scrap white and I got the melon mambo ink with one of the one of the sentiments from the kit and I just wanted to since I didn't last time on the card I wanted to make sure to go back to using the stamps from the kit So may this new season hold wonderful new experiences. But again, if you've got other stamps you want to use, if you need a birthday card or something like that, then by all means, go ahead and use what you got. I'm just going to adhere this on to my Melon Mambo piece. And I'm going to... Do my best to eyeball that. And then I pop that up in the, um, kind of in the, not in the center, but up above a little bit of the face, but not onto the, like the butterfly part too far, or the sky part too far. I'm 
just going to stick that on there. Kind of try and make sure it seems centered on there. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I use the butterfly from the elements. I guess it, it looks kind of like a moth. Maybe it's not even a butterfly. It kind of looks like a moth. And then I pop that up on the front. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put, I got the sparkly, iridescent y, opal -y jewels from the kit. And I just put those on the edges. Then I got my moth. And I'm popping that up. And I'm going to put the dimensionals right along the, um, what do we want to call that? Is that the thorax of our butterfly moth? This body, I don't know what we call it. I don't remember from my, my science days what the name of this butterfly segment is. But we want to put our... dimensional right along there and then pop it up not over the top but somewhere you know up along the the top there I might pull it down a little bit because my butterflies were an afterthought I'm not exactly sure I got them layered where I want them but so now we put the small little butterfly onto our block and I'm going to stamp it on this is the part of the card that continued over here and so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to stamp in the melon mambo my butterflies so I want to let me get this piece of paper I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp my butterflies in this trim of the back side to give them a little bit of look like this in a way kind of type of feel so they're not just the basic butterfly they've got some action going on underneath and by stamping them off I've made them several different shades of that pink and then we're going to go ahead and cut them out so let me pause you for a second I have them all cut out now and I just am going to take some of my dimensionals and pop them up on the card and try and you know figure out exactly where I want them That's the hardest part for me is to figure out where to place them so that they look good without being too methodically placed. And maybe since I'm using three and they're all kind of going the same direction, that could be part of the issue. But you know, you could stamp on your silicone mat and reverse some of the uh, like the butterfly that he reverses direction if you stamp him on your silicone mat and then push um, put the paper down then on top of the mat and press on it it will get the ink onto the paper in reverse so that's always an idea and then I just put this one down into the pink part just to kind of break it up and and give it a little different look so you can write inside or you can cut a piece of paper if you're using a colored base you'll want to cut a piece of paper to go inside and I believe this is you would cut obviously this was four and a quarter so you would cut this one to four and then inside you've got 
um, probably four and a half, so you could do four by four and a quarter, and then put a white on the inside. But there you go, guys. That is my fourth and final card for this kit. I hope you enjoy them, and if you make any of these creations, go ahead and post them on the Green Thumb Stampers uh, All Things Paper Pumpkin page. We'd love to see your creations, too. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching, guys.